Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Austin Peterson here, uh, host of the Freedom Watch podcast and current U.S. Senate candidate in the state of Missouri. Today is Monday, September the 18th, and it is a beautiful morning here in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, and I had a really, really fun weekend, very exciting. Um, I made a, a uh, what was supposed to be a trip just for a wedding into a uh, sort of a mini workcation. <clears throat> As some of you uh, know, if you follow my social media accounts, AP for Liberty on Twitter or AP for Liberty on Facebook. Actually, I haven't been posting as much stuff on Facebook just because... Uh, um, my campaign manager is like, no, nope. <laughs> but, um, I do get to tweet still quite a bit, but, um, I posted a picture of myself and the lovely Liberty Laura, which, uh, sh I got to see her this weekend as well as my good friend, Naomi Velasa, like Velasa Raptor. Uh, and it was so great to see all of my friends, Joe Trotter, one of my closest personal friends got married over the weekend in a beautiful ceremony out at Bethany beach. Uh, which I was a groomsman in, and that was on Saturday evening. I danced the entire night away, um, had a lot of fun with my friends. And uh, But the day before that, uh, on Friday, we arrived in D.C., um, Jeffrey Carson and myself, and we had seven interviews. I mean, seven interviews in one day and and like they were all before 3 p.m. in the afternoon I think we flew in the flight was at like 5 a.m. we got our, uh, into DC around 8 grabbed the rental car headed to our first meeting I mean we went to Yao we went to the NRSC we went to the club for growth we went to roll call we met with Jim Antle from the Washington Examiner we met with the KC star and then I mean I can't even CNN I had an interview with CNN it was not a, a television interview but uh, a print interview just a lot of um, background for the preparation for the uh, coverage of the U.S. Senate campaigns next year. A lot of these reporters that I'm talking to, like Roll Call and others, are just starting to kind of get to know the candidates. Uh, so they don't always publish interviews after you meet with them. Frequently what they're doing is just kind of getting like a, a biography. As a matter of fact, the, the people who interviewed me for Roll Call were just like going through my extensive biography. It's like the first question they asked was, when were you born? <laughs> and after that, it was like, okay, how did you get here? How did you go there? What did you go to school? What year was this? What year did you go back to there? And it's been quite of an you know exciting career from uh, for me after college here in, in Missouri you know as I bounced from production and plays and theater and, and television and production to uh, politics you know obviously people are going to be interested in how I made that transition so I kind of gave them all the history and background on that but for those of you who know me you know me well of course I got started politically as a uh, foot soldier for the Ron Paul revolution in 2007 um, and I'm still fighting for the cause today, still fighting for liberty today to continue uh, the advance of the ideas of economic freedom and personal liberty, which, of course, is why I even have this podcast that I'm talking to you about today. And uh, after I met with Jim Mantle, uh, there was an article that came out in the Washington Examiner, which I thought was very good, which I want to share with you all today. But before I do, uh, I want to introduce you to my sponsor this month, the United States Concealed Carry Association. And honestly, guys, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to have this sponsor. I mean, obviously, it's great to just have a sponsor because it's totally legit. Like I'm a guy in his, you know, uh, apartment doing a podcast and I'm getting sponsored. I mean, exciting, right? But better than that, than that is the fact that I really, really believe in this product, which is essentially insurance for people who like me, uh, like to pack heat, like to take care of themselves, uh, practice their second amendment rights. I mean, I'm not super concerned that somebody's going to break into my apartment here because it's a fairly secure building. But I do get worried, you know, when I'm out on the streets sometimes in Kansas City. Thankfully, uh, Missouri is a concealed carry state, permitless carry. Uh, so I can carry and I frequently do uh, because I want to be able to protect myself and protect my loved ones. But I do worry sometimes if I have to defend myself, you know, am I going to get in trouble? Uh, you know, it's amazing how litigious society is today. It's almost better to, to if you shoot, you better shoot to kill because if even if you're shooting a robber who breaks into your home, they, they can sue you. Uh, and that's why I was really excited when the USCCA approached me about this sponsorship because essentially what they're doing is they're providing comprehensive legal and financial protection if you have to shoot the bad guy. Now, here's some of the benefits. They'll give you 100% upfront, no out-of-pocket coverage. This isn't like your Obamacare, where you have to spend $7,500 before you can actually access your insurance. 100% 
up front, no out-of-pocket coverage, 24-7 access to the USCCA critical response team. You know, it's 2 a.m., somebody broke in, you had to shoot the bad guy, you've got access to a critical response team right away. And they'll give you access to an attorney. They'll coordinate with a local attorney within two days, 48 hours, and you can get compensation while you're in court. Now, if you want to check this out, do me a favor, guys. Go to freedomdefend.com. That's freedomdefend.com. Check out their levels of membership. They have several different levels, uh, and they have a list of services as well. And it's actually really inexpensive. I mean, $13 a month. That does buy you peace of mind, and I'm definitely excited to be able to offer this to you because I know a lot of my listeners are big Second Amendment fans, so do me a favor, just go check out the website, go to freedomdefend.com if you like it, 13 bucks a month, give it a try, Um, and there's also this really cool deal where if you go and you sign up for a Platinum membership, then you're going to get a free tactical range bag, which I can honestly use because I got so many friggin' guns, like they're all over the place, they're they're like falling out of bags, falling out of my closet, I, I could actually use a free tactical range bag myself so so act quick because it's going on this month that's the arrangement go to freedomdefend.com sign up for concealed carry uh insurance and uh protect yourselves and your loved ones and you're gonna have a lot more peace of mind honestly 13 bucks a month really can't beat it okay so let's get back to the topic at hand this was an awesome article um and uh, it was in the washington examiner by jim Antle. came out yesterday it says libertarian republicans strike back against Trump's Washington. Uh, and this is whew, a very extensive piece. It's actually, it's not too long, but it goes into pretty much everything that's happening on the libertarian scene. And of course, there's a mini cameo by yours truly at the end. But let me read this to you because, and, and I'll dissect it as we go. It's been a quiet few months for libertarian-leaning Republicans in Washington since President Trump took office in January. But last week, they struck back. The House voted unanimously to curb civil asset forfeiture, rebuking Trump Attorney General Jeff Sessions for reinstating a program allowing law enforcement to seize private property from people never even charged with a crime, much less convicted of one. Reps Justin Amash, Mark Sanford, Raul Labrador, all of of them members of the Conservative Freedom Caucus, joined with liberals like Rep. Don Beyer to push an amendment stripping funding from civil asset forfeiture. And good for you. I mean, there's a list of heroes right there. And you even got a Democrat on this one. So it's good to see some bipartisanship for freedom. Um, This is a quote. Uh, I don't like voice votes, but at least this time it was to adopt my amendment to rein in civil asset forfeiture, exclaimed Amash, a leading libertarian voice in Congress, thanks to the co-sponsors. This is something that needed to be done badly, a sympathetic Republican congressional aide told the Washington Examiner. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky tried with much less success to sunset the existing authorizations of the use of military force, forcing Congress to vote on the wars that it has allowed the last three presidents to conduct, often under much different circumstances. Paul, who hails from a state Trump won by nearly 30 points with 62.5% of the vote, did not hesitate to portray his message as more consistent with the, quote, America first foreign policy the president campaigned on than what the administration delivered. Candidate Trump repeatedly argued that the Afghan war was a disaster and should end, Paul declared on the Senate floor. Once in the White House, however, President Trump is escalating the war in Afghanistan just as President Obama did. The Senate voted to table Paul's amendment, but the Kentucky senator did receive bipartisan support. Republicans supportive of Paul questioned why Democrats denounced Trump as reckless, irresponsible, and even racist while wanting to give him unchecked war powers not clearly granted by the Constitution. And let me just pause on that for a moment because it's funny that uh, Paul did that. I wonder if he kind of stole from me because uh, I, I actually had a quote that I said a couple of years ago that circulates from time to time, which was, to be a modern liberal is to believe that all cops are evil, racist, bigots, and only they should be allowed to have guns. Do you get it? Do you get the joke? Sometimes it takes a second for people to get it. But Paul's making the same assumption there, right? If the Democrats think that the, that Trump is so evil, why do they want to give him unchecked war powers, right? It just goes to show the hypocrisy uh, and the, it, of these people on Capitol Hill who are so out of touch. They are so out of touch. And the American people are sick and tired of these no-win wars in the Middle East. No end, no, no, no end to the, to the in sight. And so, I I mean, I'm tired of it, aren't you? I mean, I would have definitely voted for Paul's bill because I think it's important for Congress to restore their proper constitutional war powers. We need to restore 
the Constitution, and that's a big part of what I'm campaigning on. And I'm really proud of Rand Paul and Justin Amash for what they've accomplished. In Amash's congressional district, once represented by Gerald Ford, Trump won by less than 10 points. That's why the four-term lawmaker was seen as likely to lead a libertarian resistance to the president once he took office, despite their shared party affiliation. Paul sought to block the more hawkish candidates for key foreign policy and national security jobs to be in contention after Trump defeated liberal hawk Hillary Clinton, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton, and neoconservative Reagan and Bush advisor Elliot Abrams. All of these Republicans questioned Trump's criticism of free trade, his reticence to support free market entitlement reforms or cuts to certain social programs, as well as support for the federal war on drugs and the militarization of law enforcement. Representative Thomas Massey, a Paul ally, previously told the Washington Examiner that the criticism of Sessions on marijuana criminalization was overblown. But Massey also said that if the laws on the books were rigorously enforced, they'd be quickly repealed within a year. And that's so true. And that's actually a... a, a <clears throat> Thomas Massey is actually borrowing from Abraham Lincoln there because uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln once famously said if, that if you want a law, a bad law, to be repealed, enforce it strictly. The biggest disappointment for Liberty Republicans and, excuse me, and their allies has been foreign policy, where Trump often aligned with their views in 2016. The president has not kept his campaign promises regarding Afghanistan. It is now increasing our military forces there, said Rep. Walter Jones in a letter to House Speaker Paul Ryan. I, like many military families and taxpayers, am extremely frustrated. Near Jones's signature was this handwritten message to Ryan. Mr. Speaker, how long can you support this failed policy? Good for you, Walter Jones. Good for you for standing up to Paul Ryan and for saying that it's time for some change. If you don't know, um, uh, Rep. Walter Jones was actually one of the biggest um, cheerleaders of the wars back in 2001 and 2003, and Walter Jones has changed his mind. He was the guy who made famous the state Freedom Fries, like changing that they were going to change the name French Fries in um, uh, in the congressional uh, uh, mess, the, the mess hall, that they were going to change the name French Fries to Freedom Fries, right? Because France wasn't supportive of our invasion of Iraq. And uh, he's changed his mind on that. And one of the reasons why Walter Jones changed his mind is because he had to sign so many death certificates. He has had to meet so many families of soldiers who have been killed in these useless wars in the Middle East. And so uh, good for him for not doubling down. I mean, that's the mark of a true statesman is someone who can look and say, hey, I was wrong and now I changed my mind and I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and fix the mistakes that I made. And I really have to applaud Walter Jones. We really need more people like that in Washington who have backbone. It remains to be seen whether this flurry of libertarian conservative activity can be sustained after their political movement's federal electoral success has been stalled. Campaigns are temporary. The movement is forever, said Austin Peterson, a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Missouri. But we need some wins. And that's very true. Uh, we do need some wins. Um, some people said the campaigns are temporary, the movement is forever. And like somebody um, uh, tweeted at me uh, last night, they were like, so is this a sign that, you, that you're that you throwing in the towel? Yes, I'm obviously, I'm quitting, even though I'm basically the front runner and I'm kicking so much freaking butt that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to step away now when I'm like, you know, <laughs> the, the officially declared, uh, only officially declared, well, actually, there is another guy officially declared, but I'm not supposed to talk about my opponents. <laughs> but uh, I am officially declared in this race and uh, time's running out you think it's August 2018 seems like a long long time away but it is not it'll be here before we know it uh, and but uh, when I was saying campaigns are temporary the movement is forever well that's true campaigns are temporary you know you you win some you lose some uh, but the fight for freedom the fight for liberty the fight for limited government individualism economic freedom personal liberty that lasts forever. Some campaigns come and some camp campaigns go, but the people who are the torchbearers for the cause will go on and on, and the liberty movement will survive. Uh, but we do need some wins. Yes, we do. Uh, it is time for uh, the liberty movement to get together and to support the campaigns that are out there trying to make a difference. The ones that I've identified at this point who are the true liberty Republicans who are out there running, um, I can that I can name on my on my hand, uh, Rebecca Bidlack, 
who's running for a state level position in Florida. That's Bidlak, B-Y-D-L-A-K, Rebecca, R-E-B-E-K-A-H, Rebecca Bidlak. Check her out. She's a legit. She's Raw Paul. She's old school Raw Paul. Um, only, only 2008 Raw Paulers will get that joke. But uh, 2008, she's been, she's been in the movement for a long time. She's re- definitely one of us running for a state level position. You should check her out. Glenn Jacobs, former WWE superstar. Glenn Jacobs is actually running for Knoxville County. County mayor uh, in Tennessee. Check out Glenn Jacobs. He could definitely use your support. Also, Eric Brakey of Maine running up against Rep Angus. Uh, he's running up against Angus Kane. Uh, excuse me, Angus King for uh, for the U.S. Senate. Which, uh, if he wins and I win, then he would. Uh, uh, we would be joined together with Senator Rand Paul. We would effectively triple the number of libertarian Republicans in the U.S. Senate, which would be very exciting. And we could all work together um, with people like Mike Lee and others to support the kinds of causes that we would like to see if we truly want limited government. And of course, there's use, yours truly. Um, so if you believe in my cause, uh, if you trust me that when I say that I will go to Washington and cut government, that I will do what I say, then please join my campaign today. Um, please send a donation. This is actually the end of the quarter. Um, the end of September will mean that we have to file our fundraising reports with the FEC, and we really want to post a big number. So please donate what you can. $1,000 would be fantastic. $200 would be amazing. If you can only donate a small amount, like let's say you know, 20, 30 bucks or something, do me a favor when you make your donation, will you please sign up for a recurring? So just like 20 bucks a month or something like that, because that's really helpful. It helps us to know how much we're going to grow, how much our budget can grow. And we can, um, we can factor in, you know, adding employees, which actually we have a really exciting announcement to make, but I can't officially make it just yet about a new employee that we're going to be bringing on that I think a lot of you know, and I think you all are going to be really excited because I know I'm freaking excited because basically it just happened and you guys are going to cheer and you're going to celebrate and we're all going to party like rock stars when we win the uh, Senate seat next year because, you know, the team is getting back together. That's all I'll say. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to the Freedom Report podcast. Do me a favor, share this on your timelines. Encourage your friends to subscribe. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher. That's the Freedom Report podcast. Uh, you can also download our Podbean app at podbean.com so you can listen to us on the go. Download us. And yeah, don't forget, to follow me on Twitter. If you're not AP, the number four, Liberty, AP for Liberty, AP for Liberty on Facebook as well. And if you were looking to make that donation and you wanted the website and I didn't say it earlier, AustinForSenate.com. That's A-U-S-T-I-N-F-O-R Senate.com. You can also type in number four. Take you to the same place. AustinForSenate.com. AustinPeterson.com is a real website because nobody knows how to spell my last name. It's just, I just, it's a, you can try, but if you type in AustinPeterson.com, I guarantee you're going to misspell my last name, right? Because you guys know. If you're, if you're a fan, you know. What is it? Three E's? No O's? That's P-E-T-E-R-S-E-N. That's right. AustinPeterson.com or AustinPerson.com. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you again very soon.